guys, Ryan here. I'm just coming at you with a little uh, review, finally, of The Dark Knight Rises. Sorry for this angle, I'm just using my handheld camera because I just got off of work and I um, just got out of the shower. I haven't really shaven or anything yet, so I'm just kind of in a lazy mood this afternoon. But um, I wanted to come at, come at you with a review of The Dark Knight Rises. I saw the film twice, and I loved it. I it exceeded all my expectations. I'm one of those people that, you know how you either um, kind of have your expectations low for a huge movie just because you don't want to be disappointed? Well, I am the exact opposite. I always have extremely high expectations. and Well, with this film, it blew my mind. This film blew my mind. And it just really made me think about how awesome of a director Christopher Nolan really is. Um, um, I love the film so much. There were a couple flaws that I didn't really notice until the second time. I don't really care about the flaws because um, the movie was just so amazing. Some people have mentioned about, you know, there's that chase scene and it randomly goes to nighttime. And, you know, some of that stuff didn't really bug me at all. And about how, you know, when the cops go into the sewers, they don't have guns, but yet when they come out, they do, and stuff like that. Flaws that, I don't really know if it was intentional, and to be honest with you, I don't really care, because I loved the movie so much. Um, Christian Bale did an amazing job as um, Batman and Bruce Wayne. I think it was his best one out of the three, because it really showed some pain. Like, he really had a lot of pain in the film, and it really, really, really... I don't know, you could see the intensity in Christian Bale's face. Um, Tom Hardy as Bane, he, did a, he had a very awesome presence in this film. He beefed up like 50 pounds. Um, you know, he just looked menacing. The mask was amazing. I love the take of the mask, um, about how, how they have it. A lot of people have been criticizing its voice. I didn't have a problem understanding it, and I thought, um, you know, some people have said, Sounds like Sean Connery or something like that. You know, I don't really care because it was... I mean, even if it did sound like Sean Connery, it was still so menacing to hear. I mean, it's just... It was amazing. Uh, you know, Marion Cotillard, I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's one of my favorite actresses now. She did a wonderful job. I wish she was in it a little bit more, but that's okay. Um, the Really, the big surprise for me was Anne Hathaway as Selena Kyle. You know, I kind of had the same thing with her that I had with Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. I remember when they announced that The Dark Knight was going to have Heath Ledger in it as the Joker. I was like, what? Heath Ledger? The guy from A Knight's Tale? You know, like, I kind of had that thing going on. But yet now, Heath Ledger is, in my opinion, one of the best movie villains ever. I mean, he just was amazing in the film. Um, and Anne Hathaway blew me away with that with her performance. You know, she wasn't really over the top. You know, she kind of just, it seemed like she was like herself or something. You know, she didn't really seem like she was acting. And I just think she did a great job. Um, she had great chemistry with everybody she was on screen with. And she really played Catwoman really, really good. And uh, I'm not going to compare her to Michelle Pfeiffer because you can't really compare the two because they're two different takes on Catwoman. Um, you know, Gary Oldman was amazing as always. Uh... You know, I'm still on my Gary Oldman kick after watching Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy for the millionth time. And he's just a fascinating actor. Michael Caine, I actually think, stole the show. I think out of all the actors and actresses in the film, his performance is... I mean, I think some of the... I think Bruce Wayne, I think Christian Bale might be Oscar-worthy, but Michael Caine just was a... I mean, if he's not nominated for Best Supporting Actor with this film... Um, the Academy just has some issues because each scene he was in, it was just so emotional. And he really, you know, Michael Caine's always been one of my favorite actors. And I think he did a fascinating job. Um, Joseph Gordon-Lovett did an amazing job, too. He was a really cool addition to this film. I really liked, you know, that, that character that he played. You know, Blake, you know, the kind of, the cop, the hothead cop. And, you know, he was, he was really cool to watch. And as you can tell, I'm not really getting into the plot, and I'm not discussing any, really any spoilers with this film. Uh, 
just because everybody's been talking about it nonstop on YouTube. And so I'm just trying to give my my take on different things of it. Um, the film was so epic. It was such an epic film. It take it took place over a long period of time, and I just love the epic feel. You know, the beginning of the movie. You know, Gotham has a a certain feel, and by midway through, it's very chaotic. And it's just one of those movies that's really intoxicating and epic. Um, the ending of the film left me, I guess you, I guess the best word to describe it is giddy. I literally turned to my friend and I was like, holy crap. Like, that was an ending to a movie. And I guess I'm going to get into a little bit of spoilers, but Christopher Nolan has, has an amazing ability to do an ending. And I'm not going to talk about an open ending that, you know, it has. I think that... Um, Blake is actually going to become the next Batman, and whether it's he's going to become Batman or, you know, if Bruce is going to come out of retirement and it's going to be Batman and Robin, I don't really care just because I love the way the ending was. I thought it was perfect the way it was, but Christopher Nolan has an awesome way of having an ending, and it kind of reminded me of Inception to where it's such emotion, but it's all through the look. There's not any dialogue at the ending. It's just different scenes and different action. And Hans Zimmer's masterful score is kind of like the emotion as you're watching the story un like you know finish up and conclude. There's no conversations at the end of the movie. The last scene doesn't have any conversations. It's just music set to this amazing you know cinematography and people. Which is kind of like how Inception ended, when Leonardo DiCaprio is walking through the airport, and he just kind of, you know, looks at every single person. They know that everything is great now, um, but they're not going to talk. They're not talking. You know, um, the score is completely overpowering the scene to where your emotion is just so with it. And that's what I loved so much about the ending, and it was perfect. And it, it held up the second time I watched it. I literally got chills at the end of the movie, the last scene with Christian Bale sitting at the table with Michael Caine, you know, walking in. And, you know, walking in, seeing Christian Bale. I got chills at that part. I thought it was so amazing. And they just looked at each other, and that's just an awesome Christopher Nolan fashion with Hans Zimmer's score. But, well, I'm reaching the seven, or I'm almost to the eight-minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off. But um, I hope you guys like The Dark Knight Rises. Let me know what you think of it. Also, let me know what your favorite Nolan film is. And let me know which Batman film you like the best. Um, I actually like them all the same. 